I was never that individual who stayed in their lane in terms of career paths. I really followed my heart and pursued my dreams in the moment. I knew about project management from engineering. I knew about balancing budgets from my job at Chrysler. I, you know, I took my skill set from finance and trading and brought it into building the business plan for our company. And so I brought this, you know, really holistic experience and became the uh, de facto chief operating officer of a business where anything outside of design I was in charge of. You know, I, I grew up in, uh, I would say, very humble beginnings. None of my parents went to uh, college and graduated from college. I saw education as a way to elevate myself and to elevate uh, my family and take it to the next level. That's awesome. So kind of going into your, uh, into your life after college. Uh, so you graduated in 1996. And so if you could walk us through um, the twists and turns of your career. So where did you go after you graduated and how did you end up where you are now? Yeah, it's interesting you use twists and turns, right? If you look at my profile, I am not the career engineer that uh, I think meant that I envisioned myself. When I was an undergrad, uh, after my junior year, I was fortunate enough to interview for a position as an intern at Chrysler. I worked there after my junior year and after my senior year. Then when I graduated, I was hired into a program called the Chrysler Institute of Engineering, which was a, a two-year program where the company basically wanted to invest in their future engineers by allowing them to rotate throughout Chrysler and, and being able to get a more holistic experience of the company instead of just being hired into a group. And so my first two years at Chrysler, I was rotating every uh, four months into a different group. So I was able to get experience in manufacturing and vehicle development and powertrain. And as a great bonus, Chrysler, as a part of the program, paid for all of uh, the CIE's uh, masters in mechanical engineering. When I did finish the rotational program, I went and actually worked for a manager who I had interned for in torque converters. He continued to elevate his career and he was a manager in powertrain for um, all of the light duty trucks. Um, I actually ended up working in that group for two and a half years, did really well, and I wanted to get more on the business side. And so I got hired into the group that was advanced engineering. And so I actually was one of the first five engineers to work on the cross, what became the crossfire. I stayed in that job for only a few months because I had the entrepreneur uh, itch early 2001 um, to move to New York City and I jump into my first entrepreneur endeavor, which was trading on the stock market. So could you talk more about what it was like uh, coming from that engineering background and going into the um, that whole area of like the stock market trades and the, you said the fashion industry and then talk about what you did when you were in that those positions? I have an identical twin brother who moved to New York soon after I did and he was already in fashion. He went to Michigan, studied design and uh, we both decided to start our own footwear company. And we have a creative who's my twin brother, right brain, you know, total instinctive, eclectic, of the moment thinker. And you mold them with someone like myself. We're identical twins, so we're, our DNA is exact. However, our, the way our minds were trained at Michigan, we became totally different when it comes to kind of skill set and what we brought to the table. So when we combined our skills, I became the business guy. And so we started to build our company. We ended up designing for um, Adidas, Fila, Converse, Lugs, Roll Elastic, every footwear company you could imagine. We launched our own company. We had a store in Soho. Um, some of the, uh, there's some still some non high definition videos out there of us with some pretty significant celebrities from our time there's we had an incredible run um but again this was in my brother's world and i was able to bring 
my expertise to help him. It was really more to help him fulfill his dream. And I had a ball throughout that process. And I learned so much and met so many people who I would have never met if I stayed in um, Chrysler all of those years. After um, my brother and encouraging him to take a, a stronger role at a larger company as a creative director, which was his dream, I shifted over to consulting startups. That was probably one of the most heartfelt times I've had in my career is helping the Detroit come out of the recession. And, and most of these companies were native Detroiters. They weren't the newer Detroiters coming in from the West Coast and the East Coast. These were African-American minority owned companies who wanted to also be a part of the renaissance of Detroit, and they should be. And then um, my last and most recent move was moving to LA because I was tired of the winters and moving to LA and this beautiful weather out here and um, continued to consult, uh, invested in some real estate, did pretty good. And all of a sudden I received an email on LinkedIn from a recruiter who was looking for someone with project management, uh, a project management background and who could work with multinational companies and you know, large organizations, governmental organizations, and bring um, all of these different stakeholders together in order to achieve a certain goal. As chance would have it, it was an opportunity to get back into automotive, and it was Toyota, and I could not be happier with, uh, with the projects that I'm working on now. Yes, yeah, so I am a senior project manager, and I'm in the advanced business strategy group. We really work from a business long-term standpoint. We work hand in hand with research and development. So everything that we're working on is either minimum five years out, um, sometimes even 20 years out. And so it really does take advantage of a lot of the skills that I bring to the table. Um, the responsibilities that I have personally is to lead a heavy duty hydrogen fuel cell electric truck program that is demonstrating the decarbonization of the global goods movement. We're building 10 trucks, hydrogen fuel cells, 100% zero emission. The only thing that these trucks emit um, are water out of the tailpipes. And so we are, um, we have five of these trucks right now that are partially built. We're going to deploy 10 over the next six months. And we're deploying them not just internally, but we're going to be having companies like UPS driving these trucks and other freight companies to show that we can have a replacement for these high polluting diesel trucks that perform in the same manner or actually even better when it comes to acceleration, noise, vibration and harshness um, and overall performance, but actually uh, having zero emissions come out of the tailpipes. So we're going to jump to uh, what your typical work day is like. Um, so if you could describe, you know, like a like a normal day from like waking up to having time with family. And oh, OK. On your regular, a regular okay. typical day. <laughs> <laughs> My typical work day um, starts very early. My, 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 my typical just day starts early because I have to wake up at usually 530 to beat my four-year-old from waking up. My four-year-old wakes up every day at six o'clock. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is, it's time to play. Pre-quarantine even, I have to wake up at 5.30 just to get my mind right. And so I do this uh, practice called the Miracle Morning. It's based on the six practices that were derived from research of the most effective, successful people in the world by this one author. It's called SAVERS. It's basically an acronym for all these different practices. It's a combination of affirmations, journaling, meditation, physical activity, et cetera, et cetera. So I spend 30 minutes, five minutes each, just to basically make sure that I'm starting my day in a very positive mindset and a meditative, mindful um, aspect. Um, once I get to work, I'll give you a typical Monday. I have a 9.30 meeting where I facilitate a, a very um, concise 
forward-looking meeting where I bring everyone together from our drivers and technicians all the way up to our chief engineer and R&D and vice presidents on the business side to talk about what we're looking forward, what's going to happen this week when it comes to the zero emission trucks, whether internally or externally, are there any blind spots, spots in our plan for what we're going to tackle this coming week? If there are, you know, let's talk about it in this forum. And then we spend that time talking about it for 30 minutes. After that, I usually have some other ongoing um, touch points throughout the day, uh, whether it's a call with the um, government agencies, and I'll have calls with our other partners throughout. Going all the way back to college, what would you do differently if you were in college again today? Oh, good question. I would do a bit more research on where the industry that I'm interested in is going. And I I say that because when I was in school, I was more concentrated on passing my classes and getting the best grade I could get and getting an internship at a a big three. But I think if I could do it over again, I would be thinking, okay, what's the next level of my interest? And how can I set myself up to be successful, not just getting the job, but beyond that job. So not only I want to be in the automotive industry, where is the automotive industry going? Being able to be adaptive to new environments and to take on challenges is something that engineering is about. And every single career path that I've had, my critical thinking and decision-making skills from my engineering background has served me well.